Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that in regardless to land, language, or label, creed, class, or color, race, religion, or ritual, that there is but one God. Yes, sir. We thank that one God for blessing us with Moses and the Torah. We thank him for blessing us with Jesus and the gospel, and we thank him for blessing us with Muhammad and the revelation of the Holy Quran. Yes. However, I come before you today as a student, servant, and soldier of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, and as his student, I would be remiss in my duty to thank the Supreme Being for his intervention in our affairs with Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. And I'd also thank that same creator for intervening in our affairs in the form of a well-made man by the name of Master Farad Muhammad, yes. who came from Mecca to America in Black Bottom, Detroit, and raised up a Georgia-born black man by the name of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, yes. and today has left in our midst a man that, in my humble opinion, is the developed model of what a human being should look like. He's our champion. I'm talking about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, All praise to uh, Jesus Allah. Yes, it is in the holy and righteous name, sisters and brothers, that I greet you in the greedy words of peace. And I salam alaikum. To the great, great pastor, Brian. I see my brother back there. Show some love for that mighty soldier for opening the doors of Bethel AME. It is such an honor to have met you, Pastor Brian, and to know that you are the kind of man that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would call and message to the black man a black preacher. Yes, sir. He had another category of preaching, he called them a Negro preacher. <laughs> and there is a difference between a Negro preacher and a black preacher. Yes, All right. Do you know though that Negro is the valuable final product of a 64 year slave breaking process where when they kidnapped us from Africa they murdered all of the adults wholesale when we first landed in America and raised us on the plantation where we were being taught as babies a foreign name, foreign religion, foreign diet, foreign culture and out of that product we became what you would call a Negro. All right. Negro comes from the Latin word necro which means dead. So a Negro preacher is a preacher that's dead from the neck up. All right. When the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about the Negro preacher, Pastor Brian, he said the Negro preacher was our worst enemy. Come on, man. He said the Negro preacher was like a fly in the mouth of a toad that was in the mouth of a snake. Mm -hmm. Come in on. order for the toad to get air, the, the, the snake had to open its mouth. In order for the fly to get it, so it's a, in, a totally dependent creature on some enemy of itself. But he, when he talked about the black creature, he said if the black creature would wake up, we would be free overnight. Yes, sir. He said if the black creature would stand up, then we would be able to solve all of our problems in the twinkling of an eye. I want you to know, San Antonio, that in this great pastor Bryant, you don't have a Negro preacher. You got without a shadow of a doubt a strong black preacher. We yeah. thank God for you, Pastor yeah. Ryan. And we should support him with everything that we have. Jeez. To Brother Greg and to Brother Mateen and to those that helped put this together, thank you so much, brother, for the sacrifice you made financially to put on such a wonderful event. Let's give those soldiers a great, great round of applause. Thank you. Brother Greg, thank you, Brother McKean. To the wonderful student helper that we have here in the city of San Antonio working hard in the name of Allah with many different problems that he doesn't expose to the public, but regardless to what he has as a problem, he's never allowed that to stop him from fighting and soldiering on the battlefield. Thank you, Brother Cedric Muhammad. Thank you, my brother. There you go. Thank you, sir. To the great warrior minister that's right down the street in San Antonio that just so happens to be your biological brother. Yes, sir. Uh, Muhammad Mobs number 64, student minister Robert Muhammad. Thank you, Brother Robert, for all your hard work and your sacrifice yes, to all of the believers.
to those that are members of Bethel AME and those that are members of the San Antonio Study Group, to those that are members, whatever you're a member of, we all the same. Last I checked, whenever they shot Trayvon Martin, they didn't ask him whether or not he was African Methodist, Episcopalian, or Baptist. That's right. When they shot Sandra Bland down, they didn't ask her whether or hung her. They didn't ask her whether or not she was a Muslim or a Christian. Come on now. When they gunned down Tamir Rice, a 12-year-old little boy in Cleveland playing with a BB gun, they didn't ask him whether he read the Quran or the Bible. Mm, come on. When they choked Freddie Gray, when they when they when they choked Eric, Gar they didn't ask what religion they had. So our enemy sees us as the same. Yeah. So since we are being handled as if we are one people, right. don't it make sense that we should at least unite and stand up and defend ourselves like we are one people? Oh, yes, sir. What y'all think? Yes, sir. So I'm so honored to be here today and to know that by the grace of God, our state representative. Sister Barbara Gervin Hawkins has made it safely here. Where's our sister? There she is. I think she was in a little accident. Oh, one on the freeway that just, we glad it wasn't you in the accident. Amen. We don't we don't want no accident on nobody, but we definitely don't want one on you. Amen. But to our state representative that came from Austin to be with us here, let's show some love for her. Y'all know who to vote for. Next time. The cycle rolls around. It was an honor to be here and to meet the great uh, Pastor Bryant, a man that shows something that we all need to start showing as a people if we really want to be successful, and that's a concept called spiritual maturity. Yes, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, when he defines spiritual maturity, he worded it like this. He said, a true Christian is a true Muslim. And a true Muslim is a true Christian. That's right. I got three of y'all that agree with me. Oh, Lord. It's going to be rough. <laughs> then the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, one day he was riding with Minister Farrakhan, and as he was driving, he asked the minister a question. He said, Brother, what is the true religion of God? Hmm, and the minister responded to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said, Islam, dear apostle. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't say yes, he didn't, didn't say no. He said to him, he said, brother, the true religion of God is to do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Right. Amen. What the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is saying, if you multiply the true Christian is a true Muslim by the true religion is do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. What he's saying is that religion is not what you preach. That's right. Religion is what you practice. Right. Jesus said the same thing. Be ye not just hearers of the word, but be ye what? Yes. Prophet Muhammad said the same thing. He said mere belief accounts for nothing except that it's carried in the practice. Right. Even in the world of psychology, they tell you that affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion. Come on. Right. But affirmation with discipline is the beginning of man working out his own miracles. Right. So at the end of the day, it's not enough to know what to do. After you know what to do, you got to do what you know. Come on. Come on. So to say you love God but not want to follow God is hypocritical. And we live in an era right now where Jesus and Muhammad have a whole lot of fans, yes. but very few followers. Come on, man. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. That's a, on, another subject for another time. We're trying to find some common ground. Come on, sir. All praise will be to Allah. Right now, brothers and sisters, if we were to look at our statistics as a people, we would have to represent to ourselves that we are in a state of emergency. Yes, sir. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he gave a story to me once as it relates to all of us that are on the battlefield trying to save our people. He said, imagine if you had a man drowning in the river and you've got a Muslim, a Christian, and a Jew all on the river while this man is drowning. The Jew throws his rope out there to save the man and it's too short to save that man. Then the Christian comes and casts his rope out, and the Christian's rope is too short to save the man. Then the Muslim comes and he casts his rope out, and his rope is too short to save the man. They are left with one or two options. Either they can stand on the bank of the river and argue over whose rope is the best, or they can use some common sense and tie all three ropes together and save that man. 
I don't know about y'all saying it, Junior, but we need time to work together. So we can save our suffering people. Yes, Because as it stands right now, our individual efforts all by ourselves is not working. Come on now. If it was working Muslim, Christian, and Jew, then there wouldn't be a 75% divorce rate in the black community. Yes, sir. If it was working, then there wouldn't be more black males born than black females. Come on now. But by the time the two reach the age 18, black females are outnumbering black males 7 to 1. Yes. Which means the black male is dying at the rate of an endangered species. Yes, sir. If it was really working, if the rope was really long enough, then we wouldn't be in 2017 in the same economic status we were in 1867, mm, where black people in America still only have 1% of the wealth of the country. Come on, so something has to be done a little bit different. Yes, sir. If not, we all should go to, to, to the government and ask for a disability check. Because we officially are crazy as hell. Yes. We should, not, on, we, should, we should be able to get a check for being insane. Talk about it. Come on now. Did you know the legal definition of insanity is is doing the same thing and expecting a different result? Yes, sir. If you look it up in the book of psychiatry, they say that insanity is one that employs a method over and over again that is proven to fail them. Come on now. Well, if we've been in America for 460 years and we've been trying the same old, same old over and over again and we still drowning in the river, Come on now. maybe we need to snap out of it. Yes, sir. And come and join together in unity and work together to solve the problems of our people. Yes, sir. And then after we get out of the river and back stable again, now we can have a philosophical argument. Yes, sir. Over whose religion is uh, is the best. Come on now. But I guarantee you, by the time we get to that point, we'll realize that religion was all a temporary system. Come on, man. come on now. All designed just to get us back into what we were before we were ever yeah. kidnapped and Caucasianized and Westernized by the white man in North America. Yes, sir. Y'all still okay? Yes, sir. Unity, brothers and sisters, is so important that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, when he described it, he said that our unity is more powerful than a nuclear bomb. Mm. Now, if you've never looked at the effects of a nuclear bomb, Google Hiroshima and Nagasaki, when a nuclear or an atomic bomb was dropped on them, and then began reading the history of the effects that come from a nuclear bomb being dropped. A nuclear bomb has two impacts. One is the initial destruction from the explosion itself in the present, but the second is the radiation that is in the atmosphere that begins to affect generations into the future. Yes, what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is saying to us is that our unity is more powerful than a nuclear bomb, meaning that if we unite it now, not only would it have an effect on the present, but we would be able to have a long-term effect by leaving the positive radiation of unity in the atmosphere for unborn generations. Come on, come on. And I don't know about you, but a real mother and father don't want their child to be like this. Come on, man. How many of you have children in the audience? Raise your hand. As a father and a mother, you don't want your child to be like you. You want your children to be better than you, is that right? Yes, sir. In fact, that was the first instruction God gave to man. Come on. In the Bible, it says when God made man, he said, be fruitful. Yes. Multiply. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Come on. Pastor Brian, some people that miss Sunday school. Hold on now. <laughs> We're we going we to try it again, all right? Y'all yes, ready? Yes, sir. The first thing that God said was to do what, be? Fruitful. And then do what? Multiply. Now, fruitful and multiply sound the same, but they're two different concepts. Right. That's right. Multiplication is physical reproduction. Come on. Yes. Come on. But being fruitful is spiritual or psychological reproduction. Yes. The way that you multiply is the same way that you are fruitful. It's just in a spiritual sense. Right. My teacher, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, said that for every physical law in the universe, there is in nature its spiritual counterpart. So to physically multiply, you bring a man and a woman together, and that man and woman Man gives the woman a seed, then she takes the seed and turns what the Quran calls worthless water into a child. Come on now. Oh man, y'all didn't hear that. 
That, uh, that alone, black man, should make you love, honor, and respect the black woman. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. She, she, our, our woman is the multiplier by nature. Yes. Whatever you give her, she's going to give you a better version of it. Come on now. Is this oh, true? Yes, give her a grocery, she give you a meal. All right, now. Give her a nice house, she'll give you a beautiful home. Uh -huh. Come on now. Is that the truth? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, this is the truth. Give her worthless water called sperm, and she'll give you a whole human being. Yes, sir. And on the flip side of that, make her bad, she'll give you hell. All right, now. She's going to multiply whatever you put in, you're going to get out more. You'll be careful. I'm going to leave it alone, my go to. Yes, sir. But the same way a man and woman would come together to multiply physically, fruitful means that ideas come together. And they share with one another each other's DNA, and you produce an idea superior to the one you came up with. Yes, sir. Our problem as a people is we've been doing a good job multiplying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, don't nobody make babies like us. <laughs> So, sometimes you can just walk past somebody and they get pregnant. That's right. That's right. The tube's been tied and burnt and cut. You got the peel and the, and the plant and the implant still get and the shot and still get pregnant. That's right. We babies kids. We don't die, we multiply. We've been doing a good job at making babies being multiplied. But the problem is, is that we were supposed to be fruitful first before we ever multiplied. And because we've been multipliers and not fruitful, we've become good mamas and bad mothers. Yes, sir. Daddies, but not really fathers. And there's a difference between a daddy and a father. Yes, sir. See, a daddy is someone that knows how to plant a seed in the womb of a woman to bring birth to a child. Come on, man. But a father is one that knows how to teach that child how to navigate successfully in the world that they brought them into. All right. A mama knows how to deliver a baby, but, but a mother knows how to deliver a mind of a child Come on, to man. make that baby into what she wants them to be. Yes, There's a difference between a mama and a mother. Yes, Mothers can multiply. The mothers are fruitful and multiply. Yes, Daddy's know where to put it. Come on. The fathers know where to put knowledge into the head on, to make the child into something great. Yes, sir. Are y'all okay with that? Yes, sir. If we had been fruitful first and then multiplied, then our children would have been born into something of substance. Come on now. But the third instruction after be fruitful and multiply, God said to us to replenish the earth. Come on. And subdue it. Do you know the word replenish means to replace with something better? All right. So the job of us in this current generation is not to make children that are like us. Our job is to make a whole new generation of people that are superior to the current species that inhabit the planet. Yes, sir. Y'all didn't like that part. I say, oh Lord, that, but they don't even listen to me. Come on now. Well, we got the, we we got a solution for that too. All right. I don't know whose iPad this is, but this thing is getting ready to die. <laughs> it's finding common ground, all right. But it's, it's, if y'all were trying to record, it doesn't say it's recording. We okay? We okay. A thank, a thank you, sis. Is that yours? Yeah. Man, I could have got some good notes out of that one before you took that. I knew I should have been getting some uh, sitting there share button. Yes, sir. Well, that's a beautiful brother right there. Yes, sir. Thank you, Pastor Brian. For not only being a great helper, but being a good man, too. Yes, sir. Where was I? <laughs> something better. Mm -hmm. So our job as mothers and fathers is to make our children not like us, but better, better than we are. Yes, sir. Are y'all right? Yes, sir. So if our unity is more powerful than a nuclear bomb, have you noticed how hard the government of the United States works to keep people around the world from having nuclear power? Yes. Come on. That's right. Now, I'm, let me say, let me rewind. 
Have you noticed how hard America works to keep black nations and Muslim nations from getting Come nuclear on. weapons? Because right. yeah. Israel has nuclear weapons. Right. 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 India has nuclear weapons. Right. 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 Russia has nuclear weapons. Yes. England has nu nuclear weapons. Yes. China and Japan and Korea all have nuclear weapons. Yes, sir. But Iran, y'all can't have one. Yes. Iraq, y'all can't have one. Libya, you can't have Why? Why black and Muslim nations? It's because there's a term in warfare, it's a French term called detente. Say, what does always have to do with you? And just ride with me for a second. <laughs> They taught is whenever one nation knows that if they push the button, yeah, we pushing the button too. All right now. And because a nation knows that if I push the button to blow your country up, you gonna push the button to blow mine up, so both of us are gonna be gone. Yes, sir. When they know there's equal military power, it forces people to the negotiation table uh -huh. where justice can prevail. Yes, sir. Well, if our unity is more powerful than a nuclear Come bomb, on. Come on. have you ever wondered why we've been protesting and we still haven't got justice? Yes, sir. We've been boycotting and still haven't got justice? That's right. We laid in, we struck in, we sat in, we went to jail, we had dogs sick on us, and we still haven't got justice? That's right. I'm telling you the reason they've never given us justice is because they know they can push a button and we can't. That's right. But if our unity is more powerful than a nuclear bomb, if we unite together as Muslims and Christians and Jews and Hebrew Israelites and Morris Science Temple and Peppers and Q's and AKAs and Deltas and East Side and West Side and Pit and Blood and Whitesboard and GD and Poor and Rich, Black people, then when something happens to us, we can push the button of unity and cause daytime. And at that time, the white man gonna have to come to the negotiation table. And we don't leave until justice is ours. Yes, yes. Come on. Thank y'all for listening to that Yes. That's pretty, that's pretty, that's sufficient. Yes, sir. That's sufficient. Well, his student, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, went a little further and he said that, that, that our unity would solve 95% of our problems. That's a pretty high figure. Yes, sir. If, if, if uh, 95% in any school is an A from where I come from. Yes, sir. It's like that in Texas too? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you telling me that if, that, if, that if we just came together, we would get rid of 90, so, so out of the 100 problems that we got? Yeah. We were, I got 99 problems, but no, okay. That's the whole nother lecture, it's another song. So. I got 95 problems. No, wait, I got only got five problems left out of. Yes, sir. Some of y'all know what I'm gonna say. Yes, sir. Brother Jay-Z. Yes. But out of 100 problems, if we just came together, we'd only have five out of 100. Yes, sir. That sounds like some good math. What do y'all think? Very good. Now, question. Just a question. How many of us was coming up as teenagers in the 90s? Now in the 90s, all, all we said we needed to do, it, all we need is what? Unity. Yeah. Anybody that was coming up and you were young in the 80s? What was we saying back then? We need unity. We have any OGs in the audience? I mean, you was coming up in the 70s. What was we saying? Black people just got what? Unite. Any triple OGs coming up in the 60s? Well, there's some triple OGs in the audience. We were saying in the 60s what? Unity. Question. If John 1 and 1 of the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word, look at this, was God. Come on. Come on. The word was with God. Do you know what it means when you say word was God? Word or was in mathematics is translated as an equal sign. So if word was God, then word has the same power God has. Yeah. Okay, y'all not hear what I'm saying. Come on. Come on. That's why the scripture will tell you, speak those things which are not. 
as if though they are. Yes, ma'am. Because if you speak them, you can bring what is not in existence in existence by use of a word. Come on. That's right. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I'm saying that that profession, professing, professing can produce possession. Come on. Yes. Okay, still only have three people that agree. <laughs> God used words to bring everything in existence. Yes, sir. Okay, y'all still okay. Yes, sir. In the Bible, did it not say that in God seen the darkness right. and God said, let there be light? Yes, sir. So he spoke light into existence. Yes. Right? At the night time and God looked out and it was dark at night and God said, let the stars adorn the lower heaven. So he spoke them into existence. Yes. Even when you get to the supreme of all creations, which is called the human being, right. in the 26th verse of Genesis, it says, and God said, let us make man. Right. Yes. So God used words to bring the stars, the, the sun, and even man into existence. Yes, what this shows us, brothers and sisters, is that words just don't describe reality. But by the law of substitution, words can bring in existence a reality that does not yet exist. Yes. So if in the beginning was the word and the word was God, the word has the same power God has. Come on. But the word didn't remain a word. It said the word became Come flesh Come on. Yes. and dwelled among Come on. me. Yes. Don't you know that all thoughts become words? Yes. All words become actions? Yes. All actions become habits? Yes. All habits become your character? Yes. And your character dictates your destiny or your future? Yes, sir. There's nothing you see that is today that was not once a thought and a word yesterday. Right. But that thought and word was spoken enough yesterday that it became a reality and a destiny yes, for us today. Yes. Oh, praise you. Yes, sir. So, question. If in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh and dwelt among men, how come we've been saying the word unity for so long and it has not become flesh yet? That's right. And I wanted to drop something on you. I think it's because we've been saying the word unity. But we have in our mind the definition of uniformity for unity. Come on now. Come on. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Yes, Did you know that if you are reading a book and you come across a word that you don't understand and you don't stop and pick up a dictionary and look that word up, whatever you read from that point on becomes a blank in your mind? That's right. So what happens if we have come across a principle in our sojourn for freedom, justice, and equality called unity, but we never stop to look up the definition of it? Then everything we've been doing since we come across this concept has become a blank in our struggle. So we say unity, but we're thinking uniformity. That's right. Uniformity and unity are not the same thing. Right. Did y'all hear? Yes, sir. We never will be uniform. That's right. Okay, y'all still don't believe that. Yes, sir. Come on, man. Breaking news. Everybody not gonna be a Baptist. Come on. <laughs> Everybody not going to be a Pentecostal. Everybody not going to be at your mass sheet. Everybody not going to be a member of the NAACP. See, uniformity is mean that we all do the same thing at the same place at the same time. That's not going to happen. But unity is doing different things at different places, at different times, but for one common cause. Y'all got that? Pastor uh, uh, Brian, it says in our Quran, it says that, that Allah has created man in the best of modes. And surely there's a message in his creation for those who understand. If you look at the human body, the human body is an example of unity, not uniformity. Come on. The kidney doesn't look like the lungs. Right. Come on now. The lungs are not where the heart is. No, sir. The heart doesn't look like the liver. The liver doesn't look like the spleen. spleen. These are all different organs that do different things yes. at different times, yes. at a different place, yes. but for one common cause, the survival of this organism. Yes. 
I wonder what would happen if our organization start working like that.
So our unity, brothers and sisters, means that we all do different things at different places at different times, but for the survival of one black organism. I support you, you support me. The liver supports the kidney, the kidney supports the liver. We one body. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And if we began to operate like that, not having the mentality that it's my way or the highway, either you go to my church or you go to hell. All right, then. Either you are part of my specific denomination or God don't love you. Come on. Right. The minute that we can get out of this spiritual set trip Come on. and this religious game bank right. that has us worn with one another and began being more concerned with the product than the formula used to get the product. Come on. More interested in what happens on the right side of the equal sign than what happens on the left side of the Come equal on, sign. That's right. Do y'all understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, In mathematics, five plus two is seven. Come on. All right. But so is six plus one. Right. Yeah. So it's four plus three. Yeah. So it's three plus four. Yeah. So it's seven plus zero. Yeah. Right. Is that the truth? Yes, I don't care what formula you use to get the seven. I want to know is did you get the seven? Come on. You should right. be less interested as to whether someone became a good man by the mosque or a good woman by the church or a good person by the synagogue. Question is, are you a good man? Oh. And if you are a good man or a good woman, that's good enough for you and me. All praise is due to Allah. I wanted to share just before we closed all the way out, brothers and sisters, about 12 action items. I had 17, but y'all heard five of them already. <laughs> they may be able to help us to go from a colony to a community. Right now, black people live in a colony, not a community. In fact, ha ha have you ever noticed that every black environment in any city that you go to, we call it the hood? Yes, sir. Why do we call it the hood? It's because the concept function of neighbor is missing from it. So we know that we're not even qualified to call it neighborhood because we're not neighbors to one another. See, see, see any of them triple OGs in the audience? Yes, sir. When you came up, you didn't have no cell phone, no flash screen, wasn't no internet, yeah. wasn't no Xbox, wasn't no, no PlayStation. Yeah. Huh, the, the PlayStation back then was the merry-go-round. <laughs> huh? The, 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 huh? The Xbox sisters was Chinese jump rope. Yeah. Double Dutch. Yeah. Right. Did you yeah. Yeah. We went out there flying no drones. Our drones was, was the basketball playing curveball. Okay, y'all didn't play curveball in the south. <laughs> you got to be po po. Y'all didn't play curveball? One curve on one side, you on the other side, y'all take the ball and you throw it across the street if you hit it and it come back to your side and you get you 10 points. And boy, if a car coming down the street, you throw it over top of the car and it bounce back to that's 20? <laughs> it was the original Xbox. <laughs> but back, that, back when you was a triple OG, it was a neighborhood. See, in a neighborhood, anybody can whoop your behind. Is that the truth? Yes, sir. Susie may around the corner and hear you cussing out her women. And she look out, hey, excuse me, hey, boy, come here. That's right. Are you, are you Maybelline's boy? Get over here. Susie may whoop your behind right there in front of everybody. And, and, then, and then, huh? <laughs> Walk you all the way back to your mom. Is that right? Get another. I say, look, look, Maybelline, I, I caught your boy outside using some of the foulest language I ever heard. <laughs> and I want you to know I whooped his behind. That's right. See, nowadays you pull that off, she can call 911. Right. She gonna wanna fight you. Yeah. Next thing you know, world star. Right. Now your mama whooping somebody, come on now. But back, back in the day when we were a neighborhood, see, see, we at, at that time, 
the language in the 60s and the 70s, which must return. This is an action item. We've got to start calling one another brothers and sisters again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brothers and sisters. Do you know what the, the, the side effects or the residuals of calling one another brothers and sisters? Yes, sir. If in the beginning was the word and the oh, word was God, at a certain oh. point by us saying brother and sister, we're going to become like that for real? And do you know whenever we become brothers and sisters of one another, if I'm your brother, then your daughter is my niece. And if I'm your brother, my son is your nephew. So whenever we are seeing each other as brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, then we become a family again. So when we are a family, I don't sit around and look at and gossip about what your boy ain't doing or should be doing. That's my nephew. I'm going to check my nephew, help my nephew, encourage my nephew. Because we're a family again. That's neighborhood. Hey. Mama Maybelline, with Mama, Mama Maybelline, when she got you, she thanked Susie May. Thank you, Susie May, for whooping me. You, 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 you need anything? You need some eggs? You, I, no, I just made a casserole. You want something to take back with you? She go in there, cut that casserole out, put a few little eggs in the back, sit. This is a true story now. Yeah. So as soon as you get back home, I can tell you, get your behind in there. And then she'll whoop your behind one time for what you said. Yeah. And one as soon as you made and then another time for the fact that you embarrassed the family. Yeah. But there's plenty of behind whoopings going on in the neighborhood. When we were a neighborhood. Yeah. Say, so I, I, I don't believe in, in whooping my children, you know that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I read a book that says violence is not is not good in any shape, form, or fashion. So I, um, you know, I, I I seen Dr. Schwartz. He said, you know, just give them time out. How's that work? Come on, come on, come on. Not Dr. Field, not Dr. Oz, not Dr. Ruth, but Dr. God. Thank you. Says spare the rod. For the child. There is no child on the earth that cannot get a message through the behind better than they can the mind. I'm not suggesting that the behind should be the option one. If the mind does not work behind, it must be next. Huh? Don't, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying child abuse now. I'm not saying child abuse, don't, and don't worry about it. You're not, you're not gonna break nothing. It's already cracked. <laughs> oh, y'all didn't catch that. Y'all didn't catch that. Hey. Okay, I'll quit. I'll quit. Come on now. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. I almost caught that. Yeah. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that before we could ever check? Our open enemy, we have to first check our own behavior. Yes, sir. People are going to respect us to the degree that we respect ourselves. So we 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 look like some hypocrites to be standing outside the White House talking about Black Lives Matter. Come on. No, we got we we gotta send a Black Lives Matter hashtag to the White House, but we also gotta send one to the trap house too. That's right. Come on. We, we, we got to go to war against white supremacy, but we also have to go to war against negativity. Come on. Come on. What did I say something wrong? Yeah. I, I know I, I said negative. Come on, I said negative. Yeah. See, negativity is a special, yeah, it ain't a dictionary, but y'all know what I'm saying. It's a special type of negative we only do to one another. Yeah. Now maybe y'all don't have this problem in San Antonio with the crabs in the barrel mentality. Oh, yeah, we do. Maybe everybody here that's black just loves each other, supports each other, always has each other's backs. I know, I know for sure that that ain't happening in San Antonio. Otherwise we wouldn't be meeting right now. Thank you. But the crabs in the barrel mentality, it suggests this. If you had a hundred crabs in the barrel, and a couple of crabs start climbing on the other crabs, working their way out of the barrel, instead of the crabs seeing that all it takes is support from us to set free the others, instead of them using their power to free the others, they, they, they use their claws to pull other crabs back down in the barrel, because it's written in the Gospel of Big Mom. Come on now. Come on now. 
Yeah. Big Mama got a gospel. Yeah. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Big Mama. Yeah. Now, she, it ain't in the Bible, but it's some stuff she said that just as true as what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John Come said. Come on, that's right. Huh? Yes, a family that prays together? Yes, yes. That's not in the Bible or Quran. That's Big Mama that said that. Yeah. Oh. Right. Birds of a feather? Yes, That's Big Mama. Come on now. Huh? Yes, sir. You lie down with dogs, you go? Yes, That's the gospel of Big Mama. Yes, <laughs> Big Mama catch you as a boy messing with one of them little fast girls. She said, look, let me tell you something, boy. Let me tell you. A woman will either make you or Right that's Big Mama talk. That's not the Quran, but that's the truth. Beautiful. Then the Big Mama catch the little girls in the family look like they're getting a little fast. Yeah, all right now. Say, look here, let me tell you something, little girl. Why would he buy the cat? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you get the for free. That's Big Mama. Big Mama knew what she was talking about. Yeah. Is this the truth? Big Mama, I was going to tell you. Come on down. What was I saying? <laughs> Big Mama. I know that was before that. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Crabs in the bread. No, that don't help me either. <laughs> well, point is, negativity, I'm dealing with negativity. Point is this. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Misery. That's Big Mama. Yeah. Big Mama got some good ones now. Yes, I got a few more, but I'm going to leave it alone. So, so if you got a hundred crabs in the barrel, and, 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 and they realize that three crabs can work together to free one crab at a time, which means at, at a certain point, the three crabs could free all the other 97 one at a time. Yeah. And if 97 could get out, maybe they could get out and tip the barrel and the other three could go free. Even there if they can only three of us die. Come on now. Wouldn't it be better for 97 to live and only, no, but, uh, but the crabs in the barrel mentality doesn't do that. No. See, instead of them using their claws to help push the crabs out the barrel, first thing that happen when they see one crab getting out the barrel, they, they reach up and say, who that nigga think he is? I mean, who that crab think he is? children start school the same way? Yes, sir. This is an action item. Mm -hmm. All right. But you remember, mothers, when you dropped your child off, if you were dropping them off at a preschool or daycare, you look over and see the white parent dropping their child off, and both the black and the white child were grabbing on the mama's legs. Mm -hmm. True story? Yes. Neither one of them wanted to go, black or white child, and then you peeled them off, then she peeled them off, and then both of them walked away real sad, didn't they? Right. Head down, uh, sniffling, uh, yeah. walking real slow. Yeah. But notice, as your black child and that white child began to matriculate through 12 years of a public food system, uh -huh. I mean school system, right. <laughs> we, we, we notice that as they move through school, the black and the white child are both being taught the same education. Yeah. And breaking news, you cannot apply the same education on the black mind that you do on the white mind and get the same result. Right. Yes, Even Betty Crocker knows that. Yes, come on, come on. Do you know that the recipe for a pound cake is different in Denver than it is in New Orleans? Yes, sir. Why? Because Denver is the mile high city while New Orleans is the lowest point in America. Mm. So even though you have the goal of producing the same result, you have to have a different formula to produce it based upon the position that you're cooking it in. Right, right. Well, black people, we're not in Denver. Come on. We in New Orleans. Right. So we need a whole different kind of recipe. But when we go to school, we never are told nothing about ourselves. Come on. Yeah. No, we're not. No. When you come to school, we learn about George Washington, a white man. Thomas Jefferson, a white man. Plato, a white man. Newton. 
Einstein, right. Aristotle, Socrates, all what? So you notice that as that child that's, that's moving through school, black and white, that, that white child is learning about people that look like him, mm -hmm. that accomplished great feats in the past. Okay. So by the time that child leaves the school, when they walk out of 12 years, they walk out with their head held high, okay. chest out, back straight, ready to be the conqueror of the known world. Right. But because all the little black child didn't learn nothing about somebody that looked like him that was great. Right. When he left school, not only is his head down, but his pants is down too now. Come on now. That's right. But what would happen if our black children were learning about black greatness the way that they're learning about white greatness? That's right. I'm telling you that if they were going through the school and they learned about King Tut, Nefertiti, yeah. Shaka Zulu, yeah. Queen MC, yeah. Harriet Tut, survey in Harlem, New York that they called the Obama Effect. Yeah. They took a group of high school students that flunked a test 80% of the class flunked prior to him being elected president. Uh -huh. Now I don't know about y'all, but when Obama was running for the first time, I was a geek. Yes, was y'all excited? Yes, sir. I mean, I was, I used to watch the debates like, like, like pay-per-view. All right. Coming out the red corner. I'd be like, man, get him! Get him! I don't know about y'all, I just, I mean, I, I, I got kind of normal to see black men out jump like men. Yes, sir. Out run, out, out, out hit, yeah, out right. tackle, out catch, out throw. Yeah. But when you watch them debates, you look at a black man out think. Yeah. A whole nother level. That, 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 that was a whole nother level of the game. Yeah. So I was, I was giddy. Giddy. And I was getting all kind of text messages. It was almost like the Underground Railroad via text message. Come on now. I had one text message from my, that said this. It said, they said it'd be a cold day in hell before a black man become president. Uh -huh. It was 28 degrees during the inauguration. <laughs> <laughs> I had another message that said, they, 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 they say that, that before a black man become president, pigs will fly. And here come the swine flu. <laughs> I had another one where they turned Obama and McCain into an acronym. Obama, obviously blacks are moving America. All McCain, right. maybe crackers can accept it now. <laughs> and then my last message got from my cousin, it said this. It said they say it over to the fat lady singing Aretha Franklin near the National Anthem. <laughs> students that had an 80% class flow. No knowledge, no new tutoring, no nothing. They gave him the same test after he got elected. Yeah. You won't believe this. 80% of them passed with flying colors. What it showed us, brothers and sisters, is that they never lacked the knowledge. Right. They lacked the confidence. Right. Yeah. But because they seen somebody that looked like them that did something they thought was impossible. Yeah. They began to suggest to themselves, man, if a black man can be the president in the White House, I can get an A on this test. And they sat down with the mind of a conqueror because they learned about one black man that did something great. Well, what would happen if they learned about many black men and many black women? How great would our children be? So I'm saying that to us, that as a mother and a father, if you want to replenish the earth, make your son and daughter better than you, you cannot rely on the public food system to teach them what you know they need to know. Come on. You got to give them some homework assignments. Come on. Homework, not work that came from the school that you that you went over with them, but homework stuff you came up with them that you know they need to know. That's right. And if you want to take it to another level, don't just teach them about rich, great black people in history. Right. Teach them about the rich legacy of our people in scriptural history. Did you know that almost all the prophets were black? Come on, come on. Y'all, y'all not here. Abraham, when he was in Egypt, he was mistaken for being an Egyptian. Egypt is in Africa. Egypt is 
is a term that came from a Greek word, Iephus, which means land of black and burnt skinned people. Well, if Abraham was mistaken for an Egyptian, he must have been black and burnt skinned. All right. Job said, My skin is black. Come on, is that right? right? Talk about it. Moses said that when he met the Lord, he stuck his hand into the bosom of the Lord, and when he took it out, it was turned white. But if it was turned white, it must have went in black. Come on, Come on now. Huh? Yes, Solomon. He's called the wisest man of the Old Testament. He said, I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Yes. Solomon was a black man. But Solomon was also David's son. So if David's son was black, Solomon, then David was black. Right. Wait a minute, didn't Jesus say, I am of the seed of David? I am of the root of Jesse? But if David was black and Jesus is of the seed, uh, you understand what I'm saying? If this blonde haired blue-eyed, stale-faced white man on the walls of the church is not Jesus, that's Michelangelo's cuss. That's identity theft. Jesus, the Bible said, had hair like lamb's wool yeah. and feet like grass that had been burned in the oven. Lamb's wool is nappy hair. Yeah. Grass yeah. already brown, you burn it, you know it's black. Come on now. Another verse said he had the complexion like that of an olive. Yeah. Well, olives are either green, purple, or black, and we know he wasn't green or purple. Come on. Another verse said he had the complexion like that of jasper and sunstone. Come on now. That's black and brown stone. Yeah. Whenever he was hiding from Herod in the army, he went into Egypt to hide. Right. Come on now. Do you know another word for hide is camouflage? Come on now. When you camouflage and you try to blend in with the color of the environment. Yeah. So in the army, whenever they are hiding in the jungle, they wear green fatigues because it matches the color of the environment. Oh, yeah. When they're in the desert, they wear beige because the sand is beige. Come on. When they're in the snow, they wear white because it matches the color of the environment. Come on, yeah. When they're on a night mission, they wear black because it matches the color of the environment. Yeah. When if Egypt is the land of black and burnt skinned people and Jesus was camouflaged among them and didn't get caught, he must have looked like the people he was camouflaged to love. He was black like us. And I'm saying that if we teach our children about the queen in Zynga, Shaka Zulu, about Nefertiti, about Imhotep, about the great ones in history, that'll give them confidence. Come on now. But if you can teach them about the messengers and the prophets and the Christ himself on as Come being on. one of them, it hey. gives them another level of confidence Come called God for this. Hey. And they don't just think they can conquer the world, they think they can conquer the universe. That's action item number one. Yes, sir. Y'all got that? Yes, sir. All right, next next point. This, and this is, to be honest with you, this is what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said was the solution to all black on black crime, all of our problems. We can get rid of negativity once and for all if we just had a knowledge of ourselves. That's right. Did you know that knowledge of self produces love for self? Right. Yeah. And love for self causes you to do for yourself? Right. Yeah. What you know you love and what you love you do for. Yes. That's why when you study black people's activity, because we know more about white people than we do know, or know about black people, subconsciously we love them more than we love ourselves. Come on, Come on now. Come on now. Yes, we do. Yes, sir. So, so, so they, they, they got bleach and cream in the ghetto now. Yes, they do. At all the Korean shops, you can go get some bleach and cream. Yeah. Is this the truth? That's yeah. right. We believe if we buy sugar from a white man's store, it's going to be sweeter than the sugar from a black man's store. Oh, no. Ice is going to be colder from a white man's store than from a white man, black man's store, even though they got it from the same water supply. Right. Yes. But it's something about that deeply rooted self-hatred that comes from us knowing more about them than we know about ourselves. So we begin to love them more than we love ourselves. Therefore, we do more for them than we do for ourselves. Okay, y'all believe me. Did you know that a dollar stays in the Asian community 28 to 30 days before it leaves? In a Jewish community, they keep their dollar for 17 days. Among our Hispanic family, they keep it for 14 days. But in the black community, a dollar only remains in our hands for three to six hours. That's right. Y'all got to hear what I said. I said three to six hours. Yeah. That means if you got a direct deposit on Friday morning, on. that before you got off of work, your money was already back with your enemy. There you go. That's bad man. Yeah. But if we really knew ourselves and loved ourselves, we would begin to do for ourselves. Y'all okay with this? Yes, sir. I'm not 
not saying we shouldn't do it for other people and with other people, but we should shop with our brother. Yes, yes. Before we shop with another. Yes, for the first law of nature itself. Preservation. Preservation. I think it was Billie Holiday that had a song out one time and she said, Mama may have. That's right. Come on. Do any OGs in the audience know what I'm talking about? What's the next verse? Mama may have to do what? This is a remix. Yes. Jews might have. Chinese might have. But God bless the people that got they own. We have to have our own. How can you go to every major city in America and see a little Italy, a little Korea, even a little Haiti and a little Havana? But you can't go nowhere in America and find a little Ghana or a little Nigeria or even a little Africa. We are integrated 100%. We do every, we, we don't even sell what we use. Come on. Let alone manufacture. Right. <laughs> Something's got to change with that mathematics. Yes, sir. So if we knew ourselves, we would love ourselves. And if we love ourselves, we start doing right by ourselves. How does that solve all black on black crime? Because the, this is my brother. That's my brother. Do you know the base word of brother is other? Your brother is your other self. So if I know me and love me and I'm going right by me, I'm going to treat my other me the same way. That's right. How can I steal from my other self? How can I rob, lie to my other self? How can I beat my other self? To beat my other self is to beat me. That's right. Does that make sense? Yes, yes sir. sir. So, man, I had a whole lot more to go, but I ain't going to do it. Let me go to... Come on now. Y'all okay? Yes, can I get nine minutes? Yes, sir. Ten minutes? All night. Another hour. Go all night. Twelve minutes? Yes. Okay, they left. Come Eleven on, minutes. Man. All right, to the top. Now, brothers and sisters, before we were kidnapped and brought to America, we did not allow our children to wear the title of man or woman just because they became 18 or 21. That's right. There was something that you had to go through called a rites of passage. Anybody ever heard this before? R-I-T-E-S, rites of passage. And if you made it through the rites of passage, R-I-T-E-S, then you had a right, R-I-G-H-T, to call yourself a man or a woman. Number one rule, if you go through, a man could not be called a man unless he shoot, showed that he knew the fundamental knowledge of what it meant to be a husband and a father. And a girl could not be called a woman unless she proved that she had the fundamental knowledge of what it meant to be a mother and a wife. That's why we call it motherhood and fatherhood. <laughs> yeah, have you noticed that we never, you've never heard the term daddyhood or mamahood? <laughs> Right. See, the hood is a piece of fabric attached to the back of a shirt or jacket that covers the head. Come on now. See, in order for you to have a, a, to be a mother, you have to have motherhood, which means you have to have some knowledge yeah. covering your head that shows you know how to rear a child. Right. Yeah. Fatherhood, you got to have the knowledge of what it means to pave a way for your future generations. That's fatherhood. Right. Yeah. Number two. Come on now. There always was an act of valor that had to be proven. Right. Do you know the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the number one enemy to the rise of us as a people, he didn't say it was the white man, it was the Jews, the Illuminati, the Bilderbergers, the Trilateral Commission, the Eight Royal Family. You know what he said? What? He said fear is our number one enemy. That's right. That's right. Did, did you know? That's right. Can I tell you a secret? Yes, sir. You heard the saying that fear is accurate and false evidence is being real? Yes. That's true. Fear does not keep you from dying. Fear keeps you from living. Come on, come on, come on. Does that make sense? It, it, it keeps you from being able to live. Because you're always afraid. And, and, and when you are afraid, then you are compromising being your principle. Yeah, yeah. And anytime you and I have principles that we know or laws and actions that we are deviate from because of a little uh, pressure or a little fear or somebody threatened us, then that's the minute that we become a dead man. Come on, come on. 
That's why there's an old saying that a soldier dies once, but a That's coward right. dies a thousand deaths. That's right. Right. We used to have a saying among us that it is better to die on your feet That's right. than Come to on. live on your knees. Come on, do, do you know that there was no such thing as a punk man on, in Africa? Right. That's right. That's right. If you were a punk man, you didn't have no children. Uh, and you didn't have no wife. Come on. Right. Okay, y'all, I'm going to read come something on, to you. Man. This is what the contenders uh, uh, used to say, which was the trainers uh, in the rites of passage in Nigeria. Listen to these words. Children, you left your village. Men, you are to return. Mm. You must erase your fears, for a fearful person is a weak person. And a weak person is a danger to his family, to his village, and to his tribe. If any aren't able to become men, you will be treated forever as children by your families and by all in the village. You will not be allowed to marry. For the offspring of such a marriage will be weak and unworthy of our people. Ooh, and that gave me chills just saying that. See, I, I don't know about you, but we got too many punk men to run around now. Come on now, come on now. Hey, come I'm on. serious. Yes, yes, sir. And, and I'm, I'm tired of these camera cowards. Come on. Yeah. Every time something happens, I want to do with my phone. <laughs> oh, you got my phone? <laughs> no, I'm just messing. <laughs> but have you noticed that, that, that when you you see people, thanks, sir. You see people when something bad is happening? Right. They taping the whole thing? Right. Uh -huh. And then I'm, I'm listening, it's a big, deep voice black man. Right. Get off of her. <laughs> Leave them alone. <laughs> right down the street, 310 miles from San Antonio, in a place called McKinney, Texas. Uh -oh. A little sister, 13 years old, in a bathing suit. Got a 300-pound white police officer with his knees in her back. One knee on, his, on her neck. Holding her down, and then it's a black man taping that. A camera cop. See, if you was a real man, you'd have flipped the camera around. And say, look, this is a message to my mama, come on, come on. to my wife, and to my children. I want you to know your son, your father, and your husband love you. But this might be the last time I message because there's a crack on top of my little sister. And I'd be damned if I let him get away with it. I'm getting ready to handle my business. And you get in and you attack that cracker. Take his gun and blow his brains out if you got to to defend your little girl. That, that, that sounds a little bit extreme, but that's all you got. Got our sister in Charlotte, North Carolina. She's uh, char allegedly stealing some eyelashes. Mm. And a man kicks her, jumps on her, slams her on the ground, and starts choking her. And we show up and ask for an apology? Come on. I don't need no apology from you. That's right. Number one, I want to know where were the, the, the nephews? Where were the cousins? That's right. Where was the dad? Right. Where was the uncles? Yeah. Where was the brothers? See, the male members of the family should have kicked the door down. That's right. And when in there took care of plenty of business. Because right. I don't care what nobody's done. You don't ever have a right to put your hands on not one of our sisters. Right. And we not put our hands on you. stand up, our women would be in a much better state. Thank you. Do you know the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that there's no such thing as a no good woman? Right. Any no good woman was made that way by a no good man? Right. He said that the woman is the natural reflector of the man. Yeah. So there is 
nothing we see wrong with our women except that they are the spiritual manifestation of what's psychologically going wrong with us. If the man get his act together, the whole community will get his act together. That is the truth. Do you know that, that uh, I want you when you leave a, a homework assignment, go to YouTube and look up a, a study called The Rogue Elephants. And in 2012, 60 Minutes did a story on what they called The Rogue Elephants. And, and, and whenever they went to South Africa, they went to a place called Kruger Park that they said had become overpopulated by elephants. So their plan, with, you know, white people always like killing everything. So they went over there and murdered all of the adult elephants, except for a few, and then took all of the children, elephants, helicopter lifted them from Kruger Park and took them to another park called Pellensburg Park. Dropped them off in Pellensburg Park as juveniles with no parents there to guide them. Next thing you know, they looked in the Pellensburg Park, the rhinos were coming up dead. The whole ecosystem of Pellensburg Park was out of whack. The, 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 the young elephants had began engaging in illicit sex. And, and elephants have a legacy of being involved in what's called meaningful mating, not recreational sex. They, they, when they get together, they get together for a reason. But now they have stopped getting together for a reason. Now the male elephants who were bringing children into the world at a young age with no adult male elephants around to show them or to speak to them of what it meant to be a real male elephant. They abandoned the responsibility of training them. The other female elephants stopped raising their children. The female elephants sat around, gained a whole lot of weight, doing nothing. Come on, come on. Come on. All right, I'm just saying. This is South Africa now. South Africa. Any resemblance to the ghetto is not a coincidence. <laughs> Everybody got in bad health. Oh, no, man. So they said, we got to do something about this. One scientist had an idea. He said, you know what? Before we go in and start killing them too, can we try something? They went back to Kruger Park and picked up five or six of the remaining adult male elephants and dropped them off in Pellensburg Park. When they came back two weeks later, the ecosystem was back intact. All the female elephants was moving around, raising their children. The rhinos were not being killed no more, and peace and harmony had been established back in the environment. Come on, come on, come on. I'm saying I wonder what would happen if the male elephant showed back up in the ghetto. Come on, come on, man. What would happen to our ecosystem? Hey. I think you can get it back in the house. So sisters and brothers, to sum it all up, the third principle we learned whenever we were going through a rites of passage, parenting, fearlessness, but we learned how important unity was to us. Yes, sir. Whatever the graduating class number was, each one of them would be given an individual twig from a tree. And if it was 30 of them that was going from girl to woman or boy to man, they would take the twig and the can Tango will say, see if you all can break the twig. And naturally, each one of them can break the twig real easy. But then the Contango would count the heads that was in the class. And if it was 30 brothers, he would get 30 twigs together and then give it to the first one in the line and say, now break the twig. He couldn't do it. They were passing all the way through the brothers and the sisters. None could break the twig. The concept they were trying to teach us is that when you are alone, you're easily broken by an outside force. Right. All right. But when we are in unity with one another, there's nobody that can stop us. Right. I'm saying that today, brothers and sisters, that individually, if all you are going to do is work with the people from your church, you're going to be easily broken. Come on, if all you're going to be is an individual, you got to get yours and I got to get mine, you are going to be broken easily by our enemy. Yes. But if we make up our mind not to have uniformity but to have unity right. and come together and pull all the twigs together, right. then there will be no force outside of us that will ever be able to break us. We, in fact, would have found common ground. Come on, now. And we can build a world on top of that common ground. Yes, Thank you for listening. I greet you in peace. I said on the Thank you so much, sisters and brothers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All praise and peace to Allah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is everybody all right? Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for your presence. Can we uh
Thank you, sir. Can we do something real quick before we leave? Yes, sir. Of course, our brothers paid a lot of money to put this together out of their pocket, and we like to know if you, you, you and I could pull our resources together to help offset the cost of putting on such an event like this. Yes, sir. Now, there's going to be another uh, follow-up to this because after we heard what we heard, we have principles and action items we can agree to. We got to start organizing to see how we can effectively start doing these things in our neighborhood. Yes, sir. One of the things that could happen if the elephant, male elephant, shows back up, one thing that you can do as a man in your community, whether Muslim, Christian, don't make no difference. But when our little girls get on the bus stop in the morning, even if your daughter's not one of those children, show up and be out there to make sure no pedophile messes with our babies. That's right. That's can we do that, brothers? Yeah. In, your, in, in your neighborhood that you live in, can, can you find the elderly in your neighborhood? Yeah. Rake leaves in the fall? Cut grass for them sometime in the summer? Look out for the elder. Can we, can we do that? Yes, can we pick up trash in the neighborhood we live in, even though we didn't throw it out there? Yes, sir. Brothers see me picking up trash in the neighborhood, they say, hey, why are you doing that? You didn't throw none of that trash out. I say, yeah, but there's something called wind. <laughs> and even though I didn't throw it out here and the wind don't blow, it's going to be my trash one day if I don't get it out, so I might as well get it now. Yeah. This is ours, brothers. Yeah. So when y'all see it, can y'all pick it up? Yes, sir. And, and, and that's a concept that we can all do. Would you, would you agree? Yes, sir. Can you agree, sisters and brothers, to shop with your brother before you shop with another? Yes. Yeah. That means that whatever you need and want, before you go and spend it with your enemy, find if there's some black businesses that sell that same product. Yeah, yeah. Be willing to drive a little farther or spend a little bit more. Y'all got that? Yes, take your children with you. Yes. And when you take them, tell them why you're doing what you're doing. All right. When you go, after you go, tell other people about the business and encourage them to go too. Can we, can we do that? Yes, sir. So these are just some simple action items that we can do starting today. Yes, sir. Can we start calling each other brothers and sisters again? Yes, sir. So we can produce that family, that neighbor could. Yes, sir. That we once used to have. Yes. And I promise you, brothers and sisters, if we take a few of these little things and do it, we're going to see ourselves have San Antonio hood, back neighborhood, and we're going to have a better situation than what we yes, have right Yes, sir. Y'all agree with this? Yes, sir. Well, brothers and sisters, uh, we also want to recognize our, our brother Keith Tony. He's a candidate for city council as well. He's in the building with us. Brother Keith, thank you, sir, for being present with, with, with us. And uh, I would suggest this to us as a people. We have to do what other civilized groups do. All other groups vote for a what before they ever vote for a who? Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In other words, they have a checklist on the things they want to see done for their people. Right. And they put that next to the candidate and ask them, which one of y'all going to live up to that? Uh -huh. And if they say that we will do it, then they say we'll back you up. Yes. And if they back you up and you get in, then they hold you, hold you accountable for it. Yes. If you don't do what you said you're going to do with a certain amount of time, then they punish your behind for not doing it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Is that okay with y'all? Yes. I believe that if you, we're going to be in leadership, we should sign a contract in blood. Amen. All right, sir. And we should be willing to die before we lie. All right. Our word should be our bond, and our bond should be life, and we should give our life before our word shall fail. Yes, sir. And if you're not that serious about leadership, then don't get in it. Amen. Come on now. Stick us, right. find something else to do. Tell them about it. Yes. But if you're going to be in front of the people, you've got to be in front of the people. Yes. You're going to be above people, you've got to be above the people. That's right. So we got to be the best. Y'all understand what I'm trying to say. Yes, sir. So yes, I want to ask today, sisters and brothers, you all can tell by the way that we represent that we're not getting faith-based initiative money from the Trump administration. That's right. That's pretty clear, right? <laughs> That's pretty clear? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. yes. We, we're not going to get no, no, no endowment from Coca-Cola or Chrysler. We're going to have to do this ourselves. Yes. So I want to ask today, sisters and brothers, if you would be willing, how many of us today that's present will be willing to give, sacrifice, or donate a $100 donation or better to help us out? $100 or better. My sister, Councilwoman, they, they took your name off. Sister 
state representative. Yeah. Barbara Sister Barbara Hawkins said, count her in. She has $100. Thank you, Sister Barbara. Thank you. Okay, hold on, hold on, time. Yes, yes. Now, only about half the crowd clapped. Come on. If somebody does what you wish you could do, it only makes sense that we should show that we appreciate them when they do. So let's give our Sister Barbara another round of applause. Our state representative $100. Anybody else, sisters, brothers, $100? You got no $100? Just a half a pair of Jordans. That's all it is. Come on now. That's barely a down payment for some Yeezys now. $100. 50. How many of us can do some 50s? My sister, what's your name? Queen. Sister Linda Richardson said, count me in $50. Thank you, Sister Linda. I see somebody else in there somewhere. Let's give Brother Jesse a round of applause, $50. Thank you so much, Brother Jesse. Anyone else $50? Who can match it? Yeah, that's barely real lobster now. Come on now. $50, anybody? My sister right there in the fourth row. What's your name, Sister Queen? Uh, Bridget Jackson. Sister Bridget, let's give her a round of applause, $50. Thank you for your help, Sister Bridget. Thank you so much. Who else, sisters or brothers? Sisters or brothers, $50. How many of us can do some 20s? 20s? My brother, what's your name? Brother Daryl with 20, Sister Queen. Sister Kathy with 20. Brother Keith. Tony. Keith Tony. Brother Keith Tony, our candidate for City Council District 2. $20. My sister, I'm My brother, what's your name, sir? Brother Johnson. Brother Johnson, 20. Thank you, Brother Johnson. My sister, Queen. Tanisha Jackson. Tanisha? Oh, somebody wants to know who to write a check to? Uh, write a check to San Antonio. San Antonio Study Group. Can y'all do that? My brother, oh, it's good to see you again, sir. What's your name again? Oh, Romeo Senior. Yeah. Oh, Romeo Senior, twenty dollars. She got me talking like I got a Mexican accent. You see that? But you know what? Everybody thinks I know Spanish. Beautiful. Oh, they say I look like I'm a Puerto Rican. <laughs> I don't know no Spanish. Yes, sir. So they, they come to me, they tell us that, what's up? I was like, well, like I'm salami. <laughs> <laughs> Only foreign language I know is that. Come on, man. Brother Martin, I'm telling you, I was in Miami, out in the middle of the ocean, way, way out. Right there by the end where you're not supposed to be. And there was another brother out there, too, and he started speaking Spanish to me. Oh, brother, I hope you're not drowning. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. And he said, oh, brother, where are you from? 40th and Boulevard. <laughs> but, <laughs> thank you, brother Raphael Senior. Brother Edward, 25. Thank you, brother Edward. Anyone else? Brother, sister, 20. How many of us can do some teens? You have a teen and a 20, you got a 30. You got the 20? And you have 10 more. What's your name, sir? Brother Herbert. Brother Herbert. Brother Herbert has a total of 30 dollars. Thank you, Brother Herbert. Anybody else 10 dollars? 10, 10, 10, 5? My brother right here. What's your name, sir? Raheem. Brother Raheem said he has five dollars. Give Brother Raheem a round of applause. Thank you, Brother Raheem. Anyone else? Get that name, Brother Raphael, for me, please. Full of senior and junior, family affairs. How much is that, five each or 10 each? 20 each. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. From Sister Kalia. Kalia. Thank you, Sister Kalia. Yes, yes ma'am. How much do you have? Two dollars. Two dollars holy. Uh -huh. 
Carrie X. And how old are you, Sister Carrie? You're six. Hold on before y'all clap. Do you know how much two dollars is on the youth inflation calculator? Come on now. Six years old, two dollars. Praise be to him. By the youth inflation calculator, is equal to eighty thousand dollars of grown people money. Y'all give Sister Carrie a round of applause. Eighty thousand dollars in spirit. Two dollars in reality. Guys like y'all know, anybody got children know that young money and old money not the same money. That's right. That's right. Your money and your children's money don't spend the same way. That's right. Is that the truth? That's right. Have you ever been to the store shopping and your child found something that they really, 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 really want? Yes, sir. And they carry it around with them the whole time and y'all get to the checkout counter? Yes, sir. And as the stuff starts coming down that you put on the belt, yes. all of a sudden all by itself comes this secret item? Yes. And then what do you do? You say, oh, wait a minute, what is this? And you grab it, pull it off the belt, and say to you, well, what is this? And they say, but, 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 mommy, look, I have to have it. Yeah. It's just $20. That's right. And you say, well, don't you have $40? Right, 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 right. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, go ahead and pay for it. <laughs> she look at you, look at it, look back right at you. That's okay. <laughs> Put that back on. Do you know how long at six? You know how long you can live off two dollars when you're six years old. You can live eight years off this. So thank you, Sister Carrie, for giving that two dollars. Sister Deborah. Sister Deborah. Sister Deborah has five dollars. Sister Samaya, five holding you, Sister Samaya. Seven. That's $130,000 on you to place the You can live off that for 14 years. Thank you. Yes. Sister Lisa, five. Sister Lisa, five. Anyone else, five? Brother Ken. Brother Ken in the back. Thank brother you, Brother Ken. Right. Brother who? Benjamin. Benjamin. Thank you, Brother Benjamin. Anybody, maybe? My brother, what's your name, sir? Brother Knowledge. Brother Knowledge? Yes, sir. Five? Five. Thank you, Brother Knowledge. Brother Christian has two. Brother Christian has two. Thank you, Brother Christian. And he looks like he's a little, how old are you, Brother Christian? How old are you, Brother Christian? 11? On the youth inflation calculator, that's $42,000. You good, though. We all right? Brothers and sisters, thank you all so much for everything you gave. And even thank you for what you had in your heart to give but didn't have in your pocket. Yes, sir. And I promise you, brothers and sisters, if we employ self-discipline and begin working hard and smart at the same time, 